Hi everyone, and welcome to Lesson 7 in our series 3D Modeling for Newbies. In this episode, we're going to take a look at the Turn and Spin tool. We're going to look at creating columns, creating custom shapes, as well as fixing some of the rough surfaces that you may encounter. The Turn and Spin tool is rather new to the collection of tools available within the Aspire software. It's not meant to create new and different shapes, or to create something that couldn't have been done before, but rather, it's there to create the components easier than before. If you want to find it, it's the fourth icon from the left, or the center icon on the top row. So let's just go back a ways in time and see how we created shapes previously. We would use the two rail sweep, for example, to be able to create this column. We had our left vector and our right vector as our rails. And we had our profile, which was simply an arc. We choose the left and the right, make sure they're running in the same direction as we've learned in our previous lessons. Choose our profile, and there's the end result. In some cases, you'd get a flat spot if you don't have the span between vectors option chosen. If you choose that option and hit apply, now you have the appropriate component you were looking to make. With the turn and spin tool, life became a lot easier. All we needed was one side of the vector, add the little legs of our column to the edge, choose that vector, choose the turn option from within the software, and hit apply. A lot easier than in previous times definitely makes it easier to produce product. Let's take a look at the spin option. I have my profile and I want to create what I believe is a candle base. Turn off the picture so we can see exactly what we're going to use. Before the turn and spin option, we would choose the two rail sweep to create our component. Of course, we need the two rails, so we would need to find the dimension of the outer rail. We draw our circle, that's our first rail, and then the operation would require a second rail, so I would duplicate the first circle and then reduce its size down. That would be the second vector. Here's where some of the problems occurred while using this process. First, you need to make sure that the start points are opposite one another. Zooming in on that little circle wound up being a problem at many times. Also making sure that they ran in the same direction, as well as in what order do you choose your vectors to create the rails. If you choose incorrectly, you get odd results. Luckily, there's a reset button. Also, the start point of your profile made a big difference to, as to the end results. Let's just see if this will change. I choose the starting point to be on the left-hand side of our profile. I choose my outer rail. Hold my shift key, choose the inner rail. Choose my profile and hit apply. It's still not happening. You can see the precise order and selection of the vectors is critical. Let's try it one more time. 
I'm going to choose the inner circle and the outer circle as my rails in that order then choose my profile hit apply well I'm getting closer to what the end results should be except now the flat center part slopes towards zero that indicates to me that I need to add a vertical leg to the left hand side of the profile let's try it one more time inner circle outer circle those are going to be the rails in that order choose my profile now we're getting somewhere the downside is if that inner circle is too large you wind up having a hole in the component Vectra did add later on an option to fill the center with a flat surface and this helped tremendously in many cases but with the addition of the turn and spin tool that option is no longer needed I choose the spin choose my profile and there's my component no hole a lot less clicks to be able to produce the same product we did before and a lot less confusing of course there are a few things to look out for if you want to have a shape and let's just say I want my small side of the profile to be in the center of my component well it looks as if first of all it's not positioned correctly and it looks as if my small side is not the center of my component let's just take a look at where our starting node is let's try adjusting it and changing the starting point of our vector for the profile hit apply again and again it's positioned incorrectly as well as the shape is not what I expected so I have to make sure that my profile is positioned within the workspace correctly now that we have it positioned the small side is still to the outside of my component I wanted it to be the other way the simple solution to that is mirror the vector to the opposite side read the instructions spin around the left end point let's take a look at the existing models that are within the software luckily some models come grouped together with their components so I can deselect the ones I don't want and take a look at this form and try to analyze how it was created I can create a boundary vector I can split that boundary vector into two and now I have the profile that I could use for the turn option just like the column earlier I chose the right hand side you could choose either side to create the component from the turn tool you can see with this end result it's rather rough cause of this roughness is the nodes that were used to create the profile with the vector selected we can hit the N key to enter into the node editing mode and see how many nodes it actually took to create that vector we could smooth it out by using the fit curves to vector option to reduce the amount of nodes make them smoother try it again 
It came out better this time, but it's still rough. It's not as nice as the original. So you can only imagine what it took to create a very, very smooth edge. The lesson here is, use the least amount of nodes you can to create the profile vector that's required. So the spin and turn tool is used to help you with the process of creating components. Everything could have been made using other tools, but now it's a lot simpler and a lot easier. In our next lesson, we're going to take a look at the sculpting tool and some of the other ones available within the software. If you want to learn more about the Vectric software, subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to click on the bell to be notified of our next video. And as always, if you need help, send me an email, mmatmazolic.com. I'll be glad to help. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Enjoy.